Okay, my friends. So let's start our story, right? The untold um, story of our history, right? Um, we, uh, of course, we have talked about this before. We know what happens if um, we are missing a whole history, right? We have we have been talking about American history. You have been talking about American history in your classes um, for 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 a whole, you know, many many years, right? But um, what what what? Uh, we were missing really in the dominant history that we were we, we have been told about american history is black history right and how ignorant we are of black history for instance right to make the subject relevant and to 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 bring home to you what is the importance of history right so so um so if we do if if we consider, if we um, sort of delete black history from the pages of um, of uh, American history, right, we will have certainly a very, very deficient knowledge of what has happened, right, in American history to bring us to this point in history. So... Um, to, to this is this is just as a starting point of recognizing what is the um, what is the importance of history and and um, and and how um, how one one needs to pay attention to this very very um, sort of basic uh, basic um, sort of tool of um, becoming a sort of full human being, right? It is necessary for us to have a view of history, right? So, so the question then is is the very elementary question. Therefore, is what is history? And I will uh, spend this uh, session a, a little bit on the definition of our uh, of of history, right? So uh, we, we we first begin by 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 the etymology, right? To finding out what is the root of history, right? And we realize that it comes from the Greek historia, right? Which means actually to inquire, right? To inquire, um, you know, well. It, inquire right in inquiry um, and 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 the knowledge that that you acquire right by this investigation by this inquiry right so and and what do you want to inquire about in any definition of uh, of a history right is a past it could be a near past it could be uh, an ancient past, but but nevertheless is a past, right? And we all have a past, right? Yeah, um, you have a past. You have a history. Your parents have histories. Your grandparents have had histories, right? Um, people have histories. Languages have histories, right? Cultures have histories. And the way we have gotten to the point where we are at the moment, that too has a history, right? So the question is, I mean, the, the purpose of this is to become aware of a past, right? And then uh, the next question, of course, is um, whose past, right? The next question that we get is um, whose past, right? Well, we will get to who's past in our next session, right? That is a very, very important part of our inquiry into our collective past, right? So for one thing, it's our collective past that we want to inquire about, right? Okay. 
So in order to do that, in order for us to do that, right, we, we know that, you know, I am talking to you to a language, in a language which you understand, right? Um, اگر فارسی صحبت کنم نمی فهمید. I just spoke in Persian and we know that you, you know you, most of you probably don't know Persian. Maybe one of you is an Iranian, right? Uh, and knows Persian. Um, but at any rate, you need the language, whatever language that might be. You know, you need Kurdish, you need Spanish, you need Chinese, you need Portuguese, you need English, French, right? Different communities need a language in order to um, to, to to investigate a past, right? So just as we recollect the past in, you know, um, in August, um, I don't forget what date today is, right? Um, in August uh, 2020, right? Um, if anybody wanted to inquire about their past, right? In say 5,000 years ago, five year, 5,000 years ago, somebody wanted to so sort of, you know, record the past, right? Record the life for the past, right? Okay, so you need for that, even they needed a language, right? So what is a language? Language is any complex system of communication, right? Any complex system of communication is called a language. Sign language is a language, right? Uh, Art forms are languages, uh, um, and so on and so forth. So how did how does this human language, our human language, how how did it develop in order to render a past for us, right? How did our you know our ancient ancestors, right? Um, uh, communicate with us, for instance, yeah, um, you know, did they have a language? Well, yes, of course, they began, it is they who began to develop a language system, right? So what was the, the most ancient uh, um, system of languages, one can argue, in, in, in human life? right, uh, besides, um, sort of, besides speech and the origins of speech, right, um, it was art forms, right, art forms were, which were an early system of symbols, right, for instance, uh, as we will see, yeah, we will hear about hunters and gatherers, right? Um, the ori original mode of production of our species, right? The way we all started, right? Um, for for those populations, and we will get to our ancestors uh, in the next sessions, of course, um, the language, the chosen language for them, one of the main chosen languages for them were art forms, right? Through which they, you know, eventually developed an early system of uh, symbols. Now, these art forms, right, well, where were they, where were they sort of uh, maintained, where were they preserved? Well, in the habitat, right, of, of, uh, our ancestors and, you know, for hunting and gathering societies, which we will get to, yeah, for those, the hunting, um, hunting, uh, I mean, the, the, the sort of the abode, the home that they, um, that they retreated to, right, uh, was their caves. Right. So one of the earliest forms of uh, language that we have are these cave paintings. And the cave paintings, you know, we have cave paintings from 40,000 um, years ago onwards, right? One of the very, very first, I mean, one of the very important ones, let's say it, let's say, uh, is Cueva de las uh, Manos, 
right, in Perito Moreno in Argentina, right, and it's dated between 13,000 and 9,000 BC, uh, b before current era, I mean, yeah, right, um, it is stenciled, right, and, and uh, significantly, right, significantly is um, uh, mostly left hands are shown, right? Um, this is this is a cave painting, right? And then so 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 you you realize right for these cavemen, well, one of the things that they re recognized, yeah, and that was important was was their hands, right? Um, the, the, this this incredible instrument right of human body right um but but so so they they have they have left this elementary and very very significant sign because without them right um without them um they could not go about the business of their uh, life uh, which was really, really uh, dependent on the use of hands, right? Um, and 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 uh, and that was their hunting and gathering. So so they can communicate with uh, with us. I mean, we can presume to know um, um, something about um, the um, ancient humans um, of um, Argentina, right? Um, the hunter and hunting, hunting and gathering people of the period, right? But what we cannot understand still, because we are not coming from their culture, right? Um, is is why is it only the left hand? What could it be? What is the significance of this of the fact that they have put their la left hands? Car, you know, um, stencil their left hands into the into the um, sort of facade of the cave, and not their right hands, right? And then, and then, you know, and then we can use our imagination, perhaps, right? And then think about it, right? And think about the fact that, for instance, I mean, you know, I mean, this is just theorizing, as far as I am concerned for you, right? And maybe, maybe it is the fact that they 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 used your their right hands, right, for carrying weapons, for for engaging in fights, uh, for for throwing um, um, throwing um, you know their spears and whatnot, and and perhaps the fact that they have put their left hand, right, that is the hand of peace, maybe. Um, I mean, that is just, just an out there for you theory, right? So there are, there are cave paintings, including, for instance, the paintings of Chauvet cave, uh, cave in southern Fra France, which I told you is, you know, this one is 30,000 years old. Um, thirty thousand to thirty two thousand uh, years ago, right? Um, and 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 you see that is um that is a a a, a, a depiction of rhinoceros, right? Rhinoceros, um. So so and and so one of, one of the first things that you you will notice from this, right? Is uh, is the fact that well in southern France thirty thousand years ago um, there were um, rhinoceros right um, so now um, what is the significance of these maybe they are a harmful animal animals that are um, that are uh, you know predators and you are um, you are scared of them therefore you paint them so that in, in, in a sense you're controlling them, maybe that's the meaning of it, uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's because it's a very important um, sort of food source for you, right, um, and, and, and readily available for you and therefore very, very important in your life and you want to make sure that, you know, Others who come to the uh, to uh, to the cave in 
subsequent years know, for instance, that, you know, we had rhinosaurus in this part of um, our homelands, right? And, 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 and you see them depicting, right, all kinds of, um, all kinds of sort of scenes uh, from their ordinary lives, right? Um, I, I mean, here you see a lot of um, sort of um, figures. Um, you you see the sunshine being being sort of like emphasized in different um, in different uh, parts of the um, of 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 our uh, sort of. Um, scene of our canvas, uh, right, you are, you see humans in, in, in dancing uh, or performing some kind, kind of um, ritual, um, you see that there are things gathered here, maybe, you know, part of their foods or whatnot. Anyways, this is, this is part of the scenes of their life, right, the importance of sunshine, and so on and so forth. Um, ancient elementary paintings, right, um, symbols of, of life, right, scenes of hunting and gathering, uh, and so on, and um, so forth. So, um, to continue, right? So one of the first systems, right, of language, right, that developed by our ancestors were, were these cave paintings, right? But of course, um, um, languages developed in other ways as well, right? I mean, we still paint and painting as an art form and as a means of communication is one of the most enriching parts of our lives and we surely communicate through it but um for the uh, for the uh, for our ancient ancestors where 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 they were just beginning to um to to articulate sounds and speech and whatnot and once that has been developed which itself right takes a long time and and languages develop um through that and and so on and so forth but initially initially whatever happened right mostly was communicated orally right uh, and 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 people i mean to this day to this day we retain oral memories right if you if you if you want to ask your mom or your grandma um or your aunt how was it right um you know 15 years ago 20 years ago 50 years ago your lives, how, what was going in your lives, right? They, they begin to tell you stories, right? They begin to tell you stories. They, they don't sit to write it down, right? They begin to tell you stories. And these stories are very, very important stories, right? These are the stories that you want your children to know, right? These are the stories that that are that are very, very important to you, that explain your important questions in life, for instance, or answer the, your important the important questions that you have in life. Well, one of the first questions, right? I mean, I, I am sorry I cannot see you. Um, otherwise, you would have to. You had to answer uh, um, this this um, this question, uh, right? One of the first stories. One of the first questions that man must have asked, right, is what, right, was what, right? Okay, that it, 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 it was, it is clear, right? I mean, you imagine your ancient humans, right, in their setup, imagine your hunting and gathering um, 
in, you know, ancestor of a sister or a brother, right? And they're sitting outside of their caves. It's a nice, you know, summer um, afternoon um, or, or say evening with a breeze going on and so forth and so on. And they're looking at the skies. And what's the first thing they're thinking about? I would bet you one of the first things that they would ask is where are we coming from? What is this? What is this for a life? Why do I have to kill animals? Why are there predators? Why do I have to fight with my other uh, um, sort of cave fellow? Um, you know, um, why do we die, right? Um, how does how does life happen, right? And so on and so forth. So one of the first stories that humans told for each other, right, were their myths, right? Their myths, which 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 were explanatory, right? Stories, right, um, of life for them, right, um, of uh, what are the powers that they have to reckon with, right, what are the forces that are against them, what are the forces that are with them, right, um, who represents this, these forces, what role do they have in our, in, um, in, in, in our, uh, in our lives, right, um, so, so, so the first First stories that we have, right, uh, is our myths, right? As, and there are myths, and we will talk about our first myths, right, um, in the next um, session or so, in the upcoming sessions, right? So, this, is, this was the first, very first um, sort of a dimension of passing knowledge, right, um, from one generation to the next generation, right, by the creation of myths, by the creation of stories, and you would tell them orally to your children, and they would tell their children, and then this will go, this, 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 uh, um, the story, right, will go on, right, for uh, for centuries and centuries and centuries, right? But, of course, there will be additions and subtractions in that story as our story changes, right? It is very important to keep that in mind, right? So that's one way of communicating your past. This is a, this is a second major important way of communicating your paths and it's a more a sort of obviously in the evolution of um, human languages it's a more advanced form of um, sort of um, uh, telling and retelling of your past right because you have already the language and you're creating myths right so but but uh, 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 an equally important, right, um, sort of um, way, and I, I would like you to uh, notice the fact that I am not saying a more important, I am saying an equally important, right, and here we are getting to this whole question of orality versus sexuality, right, which is a very, very contemporary um, issue with which we are dealing with, right? What is more trustworthy, right? Textual sources or oral sources, right? And 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 you know there are, there are there are many arguments that come into play about these, right? Um, 
um, you all know the story of of um, playing with the phone, right? I mean, you say something in in as if you're praying in the ear. I don't know what's the what's the expression um, in in specifically, but by you you say something, and by the time that it reaches the last person, your story has become a whole different story, right? But then, in 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 um, in opposition to that, uh, people argue. Look, people have been handing down their religious texts, right, orally and by heart, right, uh, for for uh, for also for millennia, right. So, uh, and this is the most sacred, te- uh, sacred quote unquote oral text, right. So, what do you say about the? The, the the strength of orality and oral traditions then, right? And if you say no, you know, written sources are the best sources for 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 uh, for passing knowledge, right? Then you could ask, uh, well, are you kidding me? <laughs> you cannot be serious, right? Um, you know, you can uh, you can read something now coming out of the uh, out of the White House, right? And, and in fact, these will go into uh, uh, the archives of American history, right? You would have um, thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of written records, right, of the history of the past three and something um, years, right, but would you get, would you get anywhere, anywhere close to the true story of what was happening only through those records? Well, the answer is absolutely not, right? So, uh, and that says something about the whole issue of 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 critical thinking my friends which i will be talking about with you over and over um about yeah and that's one thing that i want you to uh, if, if there's anything that you take away from this course that is the one thing that i want you to do to today to take away right and that is the value the value of critical thinking and what is the critical thinking what is critical thinking in general critical thinking is always to question right to question what you're being told right um, even in your classes right yes you 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 compare notes from my class right to another class you compare notes from my class to your readings right um so but you have to question right you have to question the received ideas right that's what that's what they say is critical thinking right yeah yeah when 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 um you know when um when we first um uh, realized right that um that uh, the earth is not the center of the world right um well <laughs> you, you know um we, we had a lot of problems right um those who espoused um this theory right uh, had had to reckon with the dominant dogma right the dogma that gives gives you your received ideas right so critical thinking my friends is extremely important through um, through all of this right and um and um I'm, sh- I'm I, I, I hope that you become ever more ever more uh, sort of sensitive to it because it is the best tool of your lives right my friends it would if 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 you know if we had 
if if we were sort of trained into critical thinking when we would read right in our constitution that all men are created equal right and there is no no uh, no mention of women and no mention of the color of the skin of men at, at the same time that there is slavery and that at the same time that they, we are a long way from suffering you know, voting for women, right? Uh, um, it, yeah, um, all men are all men are created equal loses its meaning, doesn't it? Right? If you look at it cri critically, so that is that is what critical thought gives you in life, right? It, it's an instrument for life, right? Um, for figuring out histories, for figuring out discourses, for figuring out, you know, um, where lies the truth, right? Uh, where lies the truth? So, okay, I have gone on tangent a little bit, but to, to continue. So you, you have written records, right? But written records did not start just like that, right? People did not start write English. Um, and, you know, ancient man didn't know how to write English, believe me, right? <laughs> you, uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, it's a um, funny observation, right? Um, so so uh, what were the original right or original sorts i mean where did how did writing actually develop right uh, well two of the first forms of writing about which we will we will know more are hieroglyphics right or cuneiform writing right um now hieroglyphics are best known and we will get uh, to discussing them when we discuss egypt right are, are where the elementary uh, original language of um, Egyptians, right? And um, they they were they were symbols, right? So so for instance, you wanted to um, to to say fish, right? And you actually actually okay. I need a different color here. You actually drew a picture of a fish, right? Um, and, uh, and, and and you know, people knew what you're talking about. Obviously, they, you know, you have actually painted it, right? And you want a bird, right? You actually will, uh, will um, paint a bird and then ask the same thing and the bottle, this would be your hieroglyphic for your bottle, and then your arrow is the same thing. Of course, as we will see, these will get complicated, and, well, I mean, one of the signs that we have is, for instance, the following, for water, right? Uh, we will, we will uh, see, or, of course, the eye for, for the eye, right? But, so, in Mesopotamia, right, the same phenomena is depicted a little bit more, in a more abstract way, right? And, and, um, and, and we will see how, how these developed actually further, but for now, right? Uh, and, and this is how it will become written in the cuneiform language, which is the language of Mesopotamia, and we will get to all these areas, you will know where they are and by the end of the, this course, and you will know so much about them, right, that, um, that um, I'm sure you'll be happy, yeah? Um, so the third one, our third ones are also, okay, Chinese characters, right? Which um, more or less, right, more or less um, follow um, the Egyptian one, um, right? Um, okay, in, in, in building characters, right? So, so these were the original um, sort of um, scripts, right, in which 
we expressed ourselves in the Egyptian or the relevant Mesopotamian languages, right? So that as far as cuneiform uh, is concerned, right, we have this Sumerian, Sumer being in Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia being current day Iraq, right? We have this Sumerian cuneiform, right? Um, cuneiform right um form um language right um okay um of the 26th um, century um bce right uh, I, I mean some things you 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 can uh, probably i mean what everybody can recognize right i mean the trees right and you see that it's a depiction of palm trees um uh, well help me here right um yeah <laughs> i guess my knowledge of of um of um sumerian uh, uh, cuneiform is not that great yeah okay um moving on right and 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 uh, uh, here we have in cuneiform script of Sumeria a whole epic, right? The epic of Gilgamesh, which you have heard of, I am sure, and which we will be dealing with in our later sessions, right? So it is not as if, you know, um, the, the, around the same time that these scripts and written languages were being formed, right? It is not as if um, our historic man had nothing of substance to say, because as we see, this is yet another um, another um, Sumerian cuneiform tab and uh, tablet that deals with um, astronomy, right, uh, and and um, astronomical science. We will get to it later, right? So, okay, that was the development of script and, and, and writing. So where did it happen, right? Writing first developed in what we have come to call Middle East, and we will deal with this, with this, with this concept. Um, uh, later on, yeah, but but basically, you know where the Middle East is. Um, I hope, right? And 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 we have we have talked about it before in the in the session on geography. By now, you know it, right? And and um, well, um, writing first developed, uh, in uh, in the Middle East by around three thousand. B C E before common era and we will be getting to that as well uh, shortly right so but 3000 B C E as we will see human history is far far greater than than set of five five thousand years ago spans a greater period than five thousand years ago although yeah and not that much as we will see um, um, and well, whatever the extensive period before 3000 BCE, right, is before writing, right, is called before the invention of writing, that the period before it is prehistory. So when we say um, we are, um, um, yeah, what, what that, what, forget about that. So this is prehistory. So anything from say ten thousand BCE to three thousand BCE is prehistory, right? Historical period starts from three thousand BCE to present, right? Um, that is our historical period, right? So, but for historical, uh, um, okay. Uh, but in order to have historical awareness.
right? That's, that's what I was getting back to. What else did the first, uh, first historical men develop, right? Um, and in, in order to have a history, right? In order to have a history, you have to be cognizant of a simple thing, right? That there was a yesterday, for us to have a to today, right? And there has to be a today for, for us to have a tomorrow, right? So this whole notion of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, right, that requires a system of time reckoning. If I want to say, yeah, last week or next week, right, last month or next month, all of this, it requires a, a, a system, right? A system of time reckoning, right? It requires a calendar system, right? Well, our calendar systems, right, also were formed in what we know as Middle East today, right? Sumerians and Egyptians, right? Around 3000 BCE, Right, came up with, with the first um, calendar system. Right, so and how did you, how do you figure out um, months and seasons and 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 um, and years going by? Yeah, well, for seasons, you feel, <laughs> right? You actually feel, right? You have your uh, senses, your senses through which you feel the seasons, right? Hot, cold, warm, right? Uh, now we are having basically two seasons, right? Thanks to global warming, thanks to industrial industrialized nations such as ours, right? Uh, destroying our planet. But anyway, observing the skies, right? Ancient man started observing the skies and studying the skies, right? In other words, ancient man began, right, began to delve in astronomy. Oh, yay, who think astronomy is a modern science, right? Think again, my friends, right? Astronomy, in fact, is one of the ancient sciences of humankind, right? Why did you look at the skies, right? One of the reasons that you looked at the skies is that there were, there were entities called the sun, <laughs> right? And the moon, right? In the sky. You saw, you saw that the sun is out when it's daylight, right? And the sun, the, the sun is, you know, is, has come, right? Has arrived and it brings with it daylight, right? The sun goes away and the moon comes and with it comes the, the night, right? So, um, so, um, and, and then you, you, you saw, right? You saw that when the, when, when the sun is come, just coming out, right? Um, that's, that's, uh, that is one part of the day, right? When the sun comes, uh, at 12 o'clock, that's another part of the day. Now that we say 12 o'clock, of course, back then they didn't say 12 o'clock, right? Um, and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, in the evening, sun goes down, right? So, so the day is then divided into hours, right? And you're, and you're watching the, the, uh, the movement of, of the moon, right? Because by that, you could also tell the time, right? You could look at the sky and you can see, a, you could see a full moon, right? And two weeks later, yeah, you, you would look at the sky and you would see half a moon, right? And we say two weeks later. But then, but then you know, ancient man realized right okay half a moon we could make arrangements based on half a moon right and you go again further and you get one quarter of the moon right and and um 
and you you come up with a week right and and you look at the skies and you see oh oh okay when the moon every quarter of the moon right seven day passes almost seven day passes for every quarter of a moon to take sh to take shape in other words seven suns have to come and go right uh, for a quarter of a moon to um to to uh, to be lit again uh, so you come up with your seven days of the week right so you 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 follow the cycle of the sun and that becomes your solar calendar right and here you get a Babylonian almanac, right, lit written in cuneiform, right, um, talking about the uh, future positions of planets, for instance, to tell you how advanced they were, right, or the uh, Assyrian star planisphere, right, of uh, 700 BC, right, uh, and um, Assyrian... Uh, star maps. I will. I, I am going through these very fast because my time is finishing for this first session, and so on and so forth. And you see that. So um, okay, and just to give you a sense of where is Sumer and Babylon and Assyria, um, this is a first um, sort of uh, depiction of it. Um, okay, I think I'm going to stop here and and uh, continue with this um for our um next session